Hi, it's Craig Beals. We're back to answer a question that I get in class all the time. How many places do I go after the decimal? Well, there is a real answer to that, and it deals with significant figures or significant digits. I'm going to give you the rules and a few examples to help you out with this. But first of all, what are significant figures? Well, in science, we use instruments. We never just use numbers. So we're always dealing in objects, and when we measure those objects, we need to know how precise or how accurate our measurement instruments are. Um, as you read through this very loose definition, so be careful, it's, it's far more in-depth than this, but what we're trying to figure out is how precise our instruments are. So why do significant figures matter? Well, significant figures help show the accuracy or the precision of your instrument, and it shows that your measurement cannot be more accurate than your measuring device was. That'll make sense when we start doing a little bit of math with this. But first, let me fill up my graduated cylinder. So I'm going to take some blue liquid here and I'm going to pour it in my graduated cylinder like so and it's going to start to fill up until I get to here. Now, when I look at my graduated cylinder and my measuring device, you can see I've got some numbers here. We're going up by increments of 50 milliliters, and then I've got larger ones in between there, of which there's one, two, three, four, five of those. So that must be 10 milliliters, and then the little ones in between are another five milliliters. So let's measure the bottom of the meniscus. Bottom of the meniscus is right about here. And this is kind of, uh, you know, a poor picture of a graduated cylinder as it moves around there. But I'm going to say, just for our purposes right here, that our line goes right to that spot. So, as I start to erase a little bit of this, we should be able to see what line we were dealing with. This line right here. Now, that line is at 190 milliliters. But our meniscus didn't quite go all the way down to that line. And it didn't quite go up to the next line, which was the little line up there. It would have been 195 milliliters. So now you can start to see the importance of precision and measurement and how accurate our instrument is. We know that it's somewhere in between there. I'm going to say 193 milliliters is our measurement. Somebody else might have said 192. So what does that mean? That 3 is our least significant figure. That's the one we had to estimate a little bit to get an accurate measurement. Let's look at this in something maybe with a measurement of a line. Um, let me add a few numbers, 4, 5, and 6. We'll call these centimeters. So this one is 7 over here. And in between we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which means each one of those is worth 0.2 centimeters for measurement. So if this line went all the way up here to there, it would be 6.2 centimeters in length. But it doesn't. It doesn't quite make it up to that line. So again, this is where we show the uh, precision of our instrument. It's halfway or roughly halfway between there, maybe even a little more, which means we can't say it's 6.2, we'd have to say it's about 6.1 centimeters. We know it's 6 centimeters, now we're saying eh, it's just a little bit more. Our device only allows us to measure down to the tenths, and that's our guesstimated number in between there. Um, if we look at this one down here, notice the 1 centimeter is way over here. So, each one of these is worth 0.1 centimeter. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. And in between here, we have the same number of them. So this would be 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, until we got to 1. Now, if this went all the way up to this line, we would have 0.52 centimeters. But it doesn't quite make it up there. So again, we're showing the precision of our instrument. We can get that last one. We're right at 0.51 or so centimeters. So what does that all mean? Well, we need to be able to understand the rules. Now we know kind of an idea of why we have significant figures. But this helps us show, and it keeps everything constant in science. 
Anytime I have a red box, it tells me this is important information, and I should probably write it down. Um, a few examples down at the bottom, or a few numbers. Let's go through this. Number one, non-zero numbers are always significant. And this one here, that means I've got one, two, three, four significant figures in that number so far. Over here, one, two, three, four significant figures in this number. When I go to the next rule, rule number two, any trapped zeros between two significant figures are significant. There's a trapped zero. This one is not a trapped zero because there's nothing on the other side of it. And this one is a trapped zero. So this number, I'm sorry, this number now becomes five. And this number over here becomes five significant figures as well. The last rule, any trailing zeros, zeros at the end of the number, are significant if and only if there is a decimal somewhere in the number. So we've got a trailing zero right here and we've got a decimal in this number. So this isn't five significant figures, this is six. Over here, this is a trailing zero, but there's no decimal in my number. So this remains five significant figures, this one remains six significant figures. There are a couple rules that you need to know when you're adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. This keeps everything constant so that we understand the precision of our instrument and we can get the same exact answer in a mathematical equation um, if we're working on something here in a lab in the United States or maybe over in Germany. We should end up with the same results as long as we're following the same rules. So again, this is in a red box. I'm not going to go through this part. If you need to write them down, pause it, go through this part. I'm going to give you some examples. So, let's look at the first one here. Notice, when adding or subtracting, in this one, we're obviously adding. So we need to count up the number of significant figures after the decimal. We've got one, two, and oh, here's a trailing one. But we count the trailing ones whenever there's a decimal. So we're going to count that. This one over here, we've got, get rid of this, we've got three significant figures after the decimal. Here, this one's easy. There are no zeros to try to deal with. All of those are significant, so we've got three, which means our answer can have three numbers or three significant figures after the decimal. When I run the math on this, my number should be 533.536 grams, and this already has three significant figures in it, so that one is done. The next one, um, again, we're subtracting, so we're going to count up after the decimal. We've got one, two, three. Here's a trailing, and there is a decimal, but these ones don't count as significant figures because they're in the front. They never do, which means we've got one, two, three, four significant figures on this number after the decimal. And this one, we've got one, two, so that's going to be our limiting right here, our answer can have two significant figures after our decimal. When I plug this into the calculator, if you need one, we get negative point, point, one, one, eight, two, and when we change that into the correct number of significant figures, we have to round that to point, one, two. Now, on this answer up here, I may have left grams off of that, I shouldn't have, you should always have them labeled. For this one, I need to make sure to put the meters down here. I'm going to clear this and go to the next one. Um, and down here at the bottom, this one, let's start here, has two significant figures after the decimal. It has three in the whole thing, but we're only concerned about the ones after the decimal. And this one doesn't have a decimal. So what do we do? Well, we know that the precision of this instrument was not very good, and we can't be more precise than the instrument that we used. So this has zero significant figures. Our an or, I'm sorry, zero significant figures after the decimal. Our answer has to have zero significant figures after the decimal. We get 108.2. I'm sorry, 108.02 for our answer, and that's milliliters. But we can only have zero significant figures after the decimal, I need to round this to 108 milliliters. What do we do when we get into multiplying and dividing? So operation rule number two. 
First one, we're looking at um, grams per milliliter uh, density problem. Here we've got two significant figures. Over here we've got one, two, and we've got a trap zero. So total we've got three, two in here, three in here. Again, we don't have to worry about after the decimal. We're looking at the whole number. And two is our lowest number. So when we get our answer um, for the density of this object, we get 3.36633, and it goes on and on. Now we obviously need to round that to two significant figures. So we're going to end up with 3.4 grams per milliliter. You can get that down if you need it. It's about to go away. And the next one, we've got one, two, we've got this trailing zero, and we have a decimal. So we've got three total significant figures there. This one, we've got one, two, three, and a trapped zero. That tells us we're dealing with four significant figures, so our answer can have three significant figures. This is 12.132, and again, let's simplify that down to the number of significant figures, and we have to go 12.1 centimeters squared. Don't forget what you got going on here. And down at the bottom, I wanted to make sure to include one in scientific notation, because in chemistry or in physics, these are the ones that you're really going to end up with. And it's really important to understand what scientific notation is and how to do the math with it. So, when we look at this, this has one, two, three significant figures. Um, I'll show you how, because when we write this out, 2.61, and I take that to times 10 to the 6, that means I move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. I fill these in with zeros, and if I clean that up, I get 2610000. That's 2,610,000. Significant figures wise, I've got 1, 2, 3 significant figures in this. So, just like I told you down here, I've got three significant figures. So I'm going to switch screens here to show you how to plug this in the calculator because it's important to be able to do that to do the math with these large numbers. When we go to put this in, we're going to put 2.61 and then instead of trying to do times 10, use a little carrot thing, put the 6 up there, scientific calculators have this magic number called exponential notation number. It's usually EE, maybe it's a large, one large E. Some calculators have it as EXP. You'll just need to find it on your calculator. But when I press that on here, I can see an E. That means exponential notation. So when I press the 6, now my, my calculator knows I've got 2.61. This E means times 10 to the 6th. So this is 2.61 times 10 to the 6th. Don't have to worry about parentheses, the little carrot, the hat, or whatever you want to call it. It's good just like it is right here. So I take that and I divide it by my other number, which was 0.0034 seconds. I hit enter and I get this huge number. And I'm going to transfer that number over to our slide. Here's our number now on the slide. We know that in our answer, we can only have two significant figures because in division we have to count up the smallest number of significant figures. This has way too many. So I'm going to turn it into exponential notation. I'm going to take this decimal, I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places that direction, which means now I will have 7.676, but I need to round it up because I can only have two, so I'm going to have 7.7 .7 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is joules per second or watts. So this is how you do uh, significant figures or significant digits. And hopefully now you'll never have to ans ask that question again of how many places am I supposed to go after the decimal? You follow the three simple rules, the two operational rules, and you'll get this right every time. So good luck.